Welcome to hour number two, live right here on the first day of a new week. It's a Monday. It's the early line on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. He is Donnie Wright side. A little bit of basketball to start off this second hour before we dive in to even a preview already of Conference Championship Sunday in the NFL. The AFC and NFC title games that are coming your way on Sunday for spots in Super Bowl 58 out in Las Vegas. But before we get there, Donnie, we go around the association. Now, it is sad to say this, and I don't mean to make it even more difficult, but only three games left in this football year in 2023, now into 2024, of course, which means you might be paying more attention to college basketball, to the NBA. Don't think it's a fresh start, though. When you come over to action in the association, we're already past the halfway point for all 30 clubs around the NBA DRS. We are firmly into this 2023-24 NBA campaign. Yeah, and by the way, the, the content season as it goes on, everybody in the business loves football season because it's endless. It starts up that, you know, fire talk in mid to late August and goes all the way through February. And a lot of people say like, oh, what am I going to do with my trust me? The NBA is so much fun as it heads down to the playoffs, but also the transition into college basketball in about, it's what, late January now? In about a month, let's just say five weeks, you will be so excited for March Madness and conference championship weekends coming up here. We're not going to miss football yeah. at all, and baseball gets started here. So even though we smile, Ben, as we only got three more games left and big ones at that, we'll be okay here because we got a lot to look forward to. We are now less than nine weeks away from Selection Sunday for the NCAA oh, wow. tournament. That was nine weeks yesterday. Conference action in full swing we will look at college hoops in just a moment let's make sure we welcome in that sports grid radio audience here to start off our number two you're listening live on sirius xm channel 159 all of our other radio terrestrial affiliates now in the mix as well he is donnie right side i am ben stevens before we go to college we go around the association the hottest team in the western conference the phoenix suns winners of five straight games we expected this at some point donnie when everybody in the valley the big three kevin durant devin booker and bradley beal were on the floor at the same time we are starting to see just that phoenix wins their fifth game in a row by seven last night at home 117 110 they were a seven point favorite so that is a push but anytime you play indiana the total's going to be up there it was 245 it stays under Phoenix on this five-game win streak under in four of those five wins. A big-time win by the Suns here. This is what we expected. You talk about the big three, right? Here's what we anticipated coming over. 40 out of Durant, 25 out of Beal, and 26 out of Booker. That's the way it's supposed to go. And also, when you take a look at Nurkic as your center, just stay out of the way, get some rebounds. He got 13 of those yesterday, did his job only scoring four points. So this is the team that I expected to be here all along for the Phoenix Suns, and maybe we'll start to see that. It wasn't too long ago, but I'm like, ah, game under 500, 500 record. Now 24 and 18 and rounding into form at the right time as we get that playoff push here coming up as we enter into yeah. the month of February. But I was impressed by the Phoenix Suns because this is exactly what I want to see. I don't want to see Durant having a bad game or Booker having a bad game and a guy off the bench scoring. Like, no, your big three has to perform on a night-to-night -night basis, and they got that job done yep. yesterday. 40-9 and nine from Kevin Durant. Yusuf Nurkic has 13 boards. He'll clean up the gla glass. 25 points out of Bradley yeah. Beal and 26-8 and eight out of Devin Booker, as Donnie alluded to. Phoenix not the best at covering numbers when booked as a favorite they have been the favorite in 30 of their 42 games so far this year 10 18 and 2 against the number now after pushing as a seven point closing favorite at home yesterday against the Pacers no Tyrese Halliburton out there for Indiana Pascal Siakam in his second game with the Pacers they have dropped both. Last night expected seven-point dog on the road against the hottest team in the Western Conference at full health with KD, D-Book, and Beal. But on Friday night in Siakam's debut for the Pacers on the road in Portland, they were booked as an eight-and-a-half-point road favorite, and Halliburton was in the lineup and had 21-17, and 17, mm. and they still lost that game outright by three not the most optimistic of beginnings for pascal siakam in an indiana uniform the celtics on the road last night out 
against the Houston Rockets, booked as an 11 point road favorite. The Celtics looking to respond to DRS after their first home loss of the year on Friday evening against the Denver Nuggets inside TD Garden. They go on the road. They do not cover as that pregame 11, 11 and a half point favorite, but they do win by nine, 116, 107 on the road in H Town. Tatum didn't bring his A game, 18 points. Jalen Brown didn't bring his A game, 13 points. You know who did in that environment? That was Kristaps Porzingis yeah. with 32 points here. And by the way, I know we love to bet this guy, but as we start to focus more on the NBA on a night-to-night basis, more plays coming there. Derek White, 9 of 19 from the floor, drops another three 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 three-point shots, 11 rebounds. Is there anything that this guy cannot do? And he fits perfectly with that team. It's like, hey, I'm okay to be in the background, but if you guys need me, I can really step up. Dropped 21 points in that game on the road yesterday. Celtics, the best record in the NBA, yeah. booked as the NBA Finals favorites to win the Eastern Conference as well. The C's 33-10, and 10, straight up, now 13-9 and nine on the road. This year, the Celtics have been booked as a favorite in 40 of 43 games, 20-19-1 against the number. Boston will stay in the Lone Star State, second leg of a road back-to-back tonight in Dallas against the Mavericks and Luka Doncic. Currently, Boston booked as a three-point road favorite. Not the greatest scoring night from Jalen Brown, but did have 11 assists and 10 rebounds as well. 13, 11, and 10, a triple-double for Brown. We go to the Sunshine State in all four to face off yesterday between the Orlando Magic and the Miami Heat down in Orlando and the Magic, a big win at home, winning by nearly 20 points, 105-87. A good defensive night for the Magic. They cover as a slight one-and-a-half-point home favorite under a total of 213. Seven of the last eight for Orlando stay under the number. Yeah, tough scene there for the Miami Heat, but also the Orlando Magic probably going to factor in NBA playoff team this year. Is the real MVP here, Ben, of the Miami Heat, Jaime Hawkins, who didn't play last night, and they were all discombobulated mm-hmm. on offense. Jimmy Butler, 5 of 10 from the floor, only 15 points. Tyler Hero, 4 of 14. That's not good enough. Like, this is old school NBA Miami Heat games where they used to win with Pat Riley, 87 to 86. Ain't going to win many games in the NBA, scoring under 90 points, and they certainly didn't against the Magic yesterday. The Lakers, a big win at home yesterday against the Portland Trailblazers. They win by 24. D'Angelo Russell is on his scoring uptick right now. 34 points, six threes last night against the Blazers. And speaking of points, 42 of them for Nikola Jokic last night against Mm. the Washington Wizards in the nation's capital. Two assists shy of a 40-point triple-double. He had 42 points, 12 boards, and eight dimes. We go to college basketball. An interesting Sunday afternoon, both in men's and the women's slate. History and a couple of scuffles up next here on the Early Line. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I'm not going to lie. I'm a Nick fan. I feel bad for Obi Toppin. I mean, Obi Toppin was backing up Julius Randle, and then he got his opportunity. Indiana was playing great. Didn't play Dave. Burn him off the bench. And now they got Pascal Siakam, and now he's going into a free agent year. So Obi may be looking for a new home. But I do like that fast break if it's Halliburton with Obi and Siakam. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. 
they were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're, there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. A lot to catch you up on from the weekend that was in college basketball. History in the women's game and some upsets, of course, deeper into conference action on the men's side. What a game it was yesterday in Columbus at the shot. 192 for Ohio State against Iowa. A top 20 tilt in Big Ten play. The 18th ranked Buckeyes win outright in OT. 192 over number two Iowa. Handing the Hawkeyes just their second loss of the season. Now in 20 games. It is unfortunate then. What happened after the game's conclusion will detract from a great basketball game and a great atmosphere yesterday inside Columbus, Ohio. Because after the upset, fans of the Buckeyes stormed the court. All good, celebrate the atmosphere, enjoy the environment. Unfortunately, there was a collision between an Ohio State fan and Iowa's Caitlin Clark, who had a season-high 45 points in the Hawkeyes' defeat against Ohio State. No serious injuries, although Clark was on the ground in some pain after the conclusion. Caitlin Clark, after the game, said that she was blindsided by the hit. Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith, who was on his way out, did apologize to Caitlin Clark and Lisa Bluter and the Iowa women's basketball team. An interesting game, Donnie, that, of course, has led to some discussion and discourse on social media. What did you see? Yeah, watching the fourth quarter, excuse me, watching the overtime. By the way, getting to overtime there, Ohio State with that nice fourth quarter comeback outscoring Iowa yeah. by seven points there, even to force and then 17 points in the overtime. Caitlin Clark got 45 points. She's always going to be magnificent in every game. But it's interesting, like, it wasn't really a court storming because I watched, again, waiting for the football game, I watched the entire the overtime session. Like, you saw the, the crowd like walking down towards the court. This wasn't like a college football game where they storm and they sprint to the 50 yard line and there's thousands right. of people. There wasn't that many, but I guess you can equate it, Ben. Like you're growing up in like gym class, right? Kids are just running around all over the place. You catch somebody out of the corner of the eye, you brace yourself, you collide and it doesn't look that bad because it didn't look that bad, but it's still a dangerous scenario. If somebody runs on the course, who knows? It might not have been a big collision, Ben. You sort of turn your ankle, your knee a certain way, and maybe you miss a game or two. That could be big here, but I know now you're going to get that emphasis this from the NCAA to basically say, you know what? Yeah. You've got to surround the court here. If there's a chance to storm the court, nobody's allowed on it. If you do, there's harsh penalties because let's keep in mind of something here. College is great. It's a unique atmosphere. We love it. Just running onto the football field when Tennessee beat Alabama and everybody's smoking cigars, you remember those type of themes here. But you don't see that right. in professional sports. Like if the your team wins the NFC or AFC championship game, the fans don't rush the field. And if they do, that's like 60 days in the slammer, a $15,000 fine, and terroristic threats here. I don't know if we have to go to that level in college sports because it's sort of that atmosphere, but we probably are heading in that direction, Ben. 
So a lot of people feel differently about Court Storm. Should a top 20 team even upsetting Caitlin Clark <laughs> and Iowa in overtime rush the floor? I'm all for it. We're talking about 18 to 22-year-old kids trying to be excited and taking pride in their yeah. university. However, with saying that, I think Donnie made some interesting points. In a football stadium that has a capacity of 90,000 and there is so much space, 100 yards plus, on an actual football field, it's easier to get the opposing team out of there safely. On a basketball floor, just think about it. The amount of space is not nearly that robust. Now, in terms of what happened, I'm not going to dive into the con collision, excuse me, between Caitlin Clark and that Ohio State supporter because at the end of the day, Clark is fine and will move forward and highlighted a great atmosphere yesterday in Columbus. What I will say, whether it's for Caitlin Clark, who is a superstar in college basketball, or any other college basketball team in an opposing environment where they should be escorted safely, there should be protocols and procedures, and there are, with security personnel getting them off the floor in a timely and safe manner to allow that opposing fan base to celebrate and storm the court and have a great time. Upsets should be rewarded. That is my only take. Yesterday, history in women's college basketball as well, really just all of college basketball. Tara Vanderveer, the head coach of Stanford, her 1,000 203rd win of her career. That's 1,203, giving her the most for any head coach in the history of college basketball, surpassing Mike Krzyzewski for the most ever in the history of college hoops. Vanderveer has been the head coach at Stanford since 1985. That has included not only the most wins all time, 1,203, but 15 Final Four appearances in three NCAA championships. Yeah, that's longevity right there. You don't get that many wins without doing something correct. And also in this day and age where it's always win now, win now, win now, or you're out, that's sensational stuff. And also, she ain't done yet, Ben. She might be able to stack nope. another couple hundred wins on top of that. I saw the post-game interviews and also making the rounds uh, around the networks here. She looks like she's lively, ready to go, and no stopping her right now. Yeah, Vanderveer is going to add to it. She is counting 1,203. Yep. Gino Ariema, of course, the longtime head coach of UConn women's basketball, is seven wins behind Vanderveer at the moment, <laughs> so only six now behind Coach K. As we go to men's college basketball for the second straight conference game, the Memphis Tigers learn it's difficult to continue to win in the AAC. Tulane at home in New Orleans, a big upset. 81-79, the Green Wave winning outright as a three-and-a-half point underdog. Second straight loss for Memphis. The Tigers were up by 20 at home on Thursday night in their game there. But, Donnie, yesterday they led by seven points with under 10 minutes left in that second half for Tulane to storm back and win at home in the Big Easy. 81-79 again outright as a three-and-a-half point dog. Maybe one of those betting factors you can take a look at later in the season where Memphis might get out to a lead and then collapse late in ball games. And also, I took them to go over 84 and a half points last week in a game that they actually lost outright when they had a 20 point lead in that game. Yep. So after like back to back games with well over 100 points, back to back games now under 80 points for the Memphis Tigers. We'll see if they get it going. But being 4 0 in the conference, now sitting at 4 and 2 in the conference, opening up a lot of options here for the teams behind them now. They lost to South Florida at home on Thursday, their second consecutive AAC loss. FAU survived in overtime yesterday. The Owls are 5-1 and one in conference, as are the Charlotte 49ers as well. A 5-1 and one start to action in the American. Now we go to Saturday. Upsets for teams even highly ranked inside the top 10 has been a theme around college basketball the last two weeks. The madness does not wait until March, and neither should you. West Virginia, a 7-11 basketball team, pulls off the upset at home over third-ranked Kansas on Saturday, 91-85, winning outright Donnie as a 10-point home underdog again. Home teams in conference play, they have that precedent. So the win on the road is sensational. Pittsburgh did that inside Cameron on Saturday evening. The Panthers went outright as a 12-and-a-half point underdog in Durham against 7th-ranked Duke as well. 
Yeah, big time win for them going on the road, showing up here, and also at the end, you know, taunting those Cameron crazies here. Probably always yeah, a lot of fun. Now. But even one of those games on Saturday where it is hard to win on the road, how about the number one team in the country, the UConn Huskies, escaping with a one point victory over the Villanova Wildcats and improving to seven and one in Biggie's play. Look at that, Ben. Eight games in Biggie's play. Woohoo! The numbers are all there to make some money. Number one, UConn will remain number one, winning each of its two games. Booked as the top-ranked team in the country against Villanova in Philly on Saturday. And, of course, a dominant effort at stores uh, in stores at home earlier in the week against top 20 Creighton, who in triple overtime outlasted Seton Hall on Saturday as well. Purdue goes on the road to Carver-Hawkeye. They knock off Iowa 84-70. Kentucky continues to roll. UCLA is in a blender this year, and Auburn hammers Ole Miss 82-59. Some of the notable results from this weekend around the country in college basketball. Next weekend is Conference Championship Sunday in the NFL. An early preview next. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I'm not going to lie. I'm a Nick fan. I feel bad for Obi Toppin. I mean, Obi Toppin was backing up Julius Randle, and then he got his opportunity. Indiana was playing great. Didn't play Dave. Burned him off the bench. And now they got Pascal Siakam, and now he's going into a free agent year. So, Obi may be looking for a new home. But I, but I do like that fast break if it's Halliburton with Obi and Siakam. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. They were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Conference Championship Weekend around the National Football League is now set. The Final Four in the NFL. And we start 
in the NFC. It is the second game on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. The schedule kick out in Santa Clara, California. It's the San Francisco 49ers hosting the Detroit Lions. A six and a half point spread in favor of the 49ers. It is the highest over under of the two conference championship games on Sunday, 50 and a hook. Yes, it is outdoors, but it is NorCal, a place Jared Goff is from and knows very well. Early thoughts, Donnie, as we look at the NFC Championship game between the Niners and the Lions. Early thoughts for me, too, as you take a look at live op- updates here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. That number is now six and a half here, and that total is still staying the same at 50 and a half. And I think that's the right move here. San Francisco is the better team. We know that. San Francisco is at home. They should win this football game, obviously. But I like what I see out of the Detroit Lions. And also, so many times we've talked about this, Ben, already in the past two weeks with the Miami Dolphins and also with the Buffalo Bills. It's when you play a team. I'm not saying the San Francisco 49ers and or the Detroit Lions are decimated with injuries. There are some injury concerns and some banged up players on the offensive line for Detroit. But maybe the biggest injury in this football game is Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers. Adam Schefter with a retweet, or excuse me, a tweet here that I retweeted about maybe a half hour ago, 50-50 to play in this game. It's a similar injury Mm. to what he had early in the season, which he missed two games. Now, also, football players are tough, Ben. Very rarely do you get the NFC Championship games or AFC Championship games unless you're the Patriots or the Kansas City Chiefs. You know he's going to play, but does that mean I'm more of a decoy? I can't take handoffs. Maybe I don't run those slant passes where I'm used to juking five guys and running over another four. I can't do that. That's something to keep an eye on early in the week. But just forget about the spread perspective. Just the early look, the 49ers are supposed to win this game here. Yeah, when you look at Debo Samuel, again, he missed a couple of games to the middle portion to late October, not out there for San Francisco. Of course, Debo Samuel was very vocal about the injury concerns for the Niners in the NFC Championship game a season ago in Philadelphia. You know he is going to want to be out there. I remember last year, Donnie, at this point, when the show was known as the morning after and you and Kev were rolling on the early line earlier in the mornings here on the Spiz Grizz with Patrick Mahomes' high ankle sprain. Dr. Chow's insight was spot on. With the six score they have at SICscore.com, that six score being virtually, if you think about 100, being 100%. If a guy is listed at 80, it's 80%. He said Mahomes was closer to 84, 86 in terms of that six score, letting you know that he was going to play and be effective. I wonder what that number looks like for Debo Samuel. If it is that even 50-50, Adam Schefter is reporting at this moment. So those are the early numbers. A six and a half point spread in favor of San Francisco. The over-under, 50 and a half. The Niners did see a game with a 50 and a half total against the Packers. It was the only game in the division around that stayed under its pregame listed total. Detroit, of course, over for the 12th time in their 19 games this year. 49 and a half was the total despite 3-3 early in the opening half. The Lions and the Buccaneers did find their way over. Here are the narratives outside of the numbers. San Francisco into an NFC title game for the fourth time in the last five years. We'll look at Brock Purdy's component of that all in just a moment. The Lions playing in an NFC championship game for the first time in more than three decades since the 1991 NFL season. And from that time, prior to this year, the Lions had not won a single playoff game. They have now won two at home in the last two weekends pedigree goes to san francisco optimism and maybe america's rooting interest goes to those lions yeah it does go to the lions here and i'm interested to see their game plan coming out because again you might have two of the best overall play callers in the nfl going toe to toe in this game that's ben johnson offensive coordinator for the detroit lions and of course my favorite kyle shanahan of the san francisco 49ers we'll see how the 49ers can adjust without debo samuel almost got him caught up in a loss this previous weekend against the packers the one thing we do know san francisco has a very good defense but if we're early and this might be a decision i'm going to make you know today maybe early tomorrow I like to take a look at the way the game flow went last week with the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, it'll be really interesting if the running game for the Green Bay Packers can get untracked in this game as it's been for the previous couple weeks under Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is a similar style runner to Jameer Gibbs. He had a lot of success. You saw David Montgomery not have a great game on Sunday, and I love David Montgomery. But if we're being honest with ourselves, you have to be inside that building of Detroit and say, 
boy, oh boy, we got a similar back here. Are we going to go 50-50 back split with Montgomery to get his yeah. one carry for four yards? Or we might be able to hit home runs like we saw that 150-plus yard run from Aaron Jones. Jameer Gibbs right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook is sitting at 45 and a half as his rushing prop. David Montgomery, 50 and a half. Early in the week, getting those ideas for this weekend. This is going to be more of a Jameer Gibbs for me than a David Montgomery game. I think it's a really good point. We talked about those rookies for the Detroit Lions and their impact this season. You can see all the Lions props out there. Amon Ross St. Brown, 84 and a half receiving yards. Jamison Williams, 28 and a hook. The rookie tight end, Sam Laporta, 47 and a half. Only one receiving prop for San Francisco tied to the injury uncertainty around Debo Samuel, and that is Christian McCaffrey. 35 and a half, his receiving yards number, 82 and a half, his rushing yards prop. The Lions really good defending the run. Top five rushing defense in the National Football League. They are not good against the pass. Yet again, a wide receiver absolutely torches that secondary on Sunday. Mike Evans, eight grabs, 147 yards. But who is going to be that lead wide out for San Francisco if Debo Samuel plays or even without Debo in the lineup on Sunday? As we look elsewhere around this 49ers side, of course, Donnie, the focus will be on the quarterbacks. Opposite ends of the spectrum. Jared Goff, the NorCal native, the first overall pick in 2016. Brock Purdy, not a native of Northern California, of course, who played his college football at Iowa State, was the final pick of the 2022 NFL Draft. Mr. Irrelevant versus a former number one. Jared Goff's passing yards prop, 253 and a half. He actually trails Brock Purdy. By nearly 10 yards, Donnie, 262 and a half is the number for Purdy, who, let's call a spade a spade, was not great for three and a half quarters against the Green Bay Packers on Saturday night, but was incredibly efficient in that final game-winning drive for San Francisco. Six of seven, 47 yards, two rushes for 11 yards to keep the sticks moving for the 49ers. It was McCaffrey who found Pater for the second time in that division around matchup against the Green Bay Packers. That was the winning score, but Brock Purdy has to play like that final drive and not the other drives for the 49ers if the San Francisco 49ers want to get to Super Bowl 58. Yeah, and you also take a look at this weekend, that early look at the weather conditions seem like they're going to be very good. And quite frankly, that's great for Jared Goff, who is a true dome quarterback, but also for Brock Purdy struggling in the elements. Should I wear a glove, not wear a glove, windy conditions? You even saw early in that football game, he should have been intercepted multiple times, but got those lucky breaks yeah. overall. So I do think this sets up as a pretty good game for both quarterbacks, but particularly from a Brock Purdy perspective. You know, Ben, you hit it on the head. You look at Detroit. You don't attack them by saying, like, this is a great game for McCaffrey to get 25 carries and see what he can do. Now, granted, yeah. McCaffrey still might have a lot of success on 25 carries, but you can attack this team deep, which means Brandon Ayuk might open up again downfield. Didn't have a great game this past weekend against the Packers. But also keep in mind, when you saw Debo go out of that game, like, we know Christian McCaffrey is going to be that guy that's going to be involved in the passing game. But 12 targets last week, he gets a lot of that cleanup work because that's Debo yards, right? Yeah. Three, four, five yards down the field, throw it to him, have him make some plays. Maybe Christian McCaffrey gets that increased look here. He didn't see didn't seem any worse for that wear and tear on the calf. I expect a huge, huge usage rate in this game for Christian McCaffrey if Debo is limited in any way here, Ben. Led San Fran in targets, as Donnie just mentioned, with 12. Led the 49ers in receptions as well with seven. In fully healthy games, of course, the New Year's Eve Sunday against the Commanders, he was not fully healthy dealing with that calf injury. But in fully healthy games, Christian McCaffrey has had at least 100 scrimmage yards since October 23rd. 98 yards on the ground against the Green Bay Packers, 30 through the air. That's nearly 130 total yards for McCaffrey on Saturday night against Green Bay. There is the idea that Jared Goff doesn't do well in the elements. Are we going to see elements near his hometown by the Bay on Sunday night? I don't necessarily expect that to be the case. Again, San Francisco is a six and a half point favorite, the total 50 and a half. By the numbers, the 49ers have been booked as a favorite in all 18 games this year, including the division around, they laid nine and a half against San Francisco. They have been, or against Green Bay, excuse me. They have been north of a touchdown favorite, Donnie. 
nine times now in those 18 games booked as the favored side. They are just 9-9 nine and nine against the spread in all 18 games as the favorite. The Lions were an underdog for a good majority of the games under Dan Campbell in his first two years. This year, the Lions have only been booked as a dog three times now in their 19 games played. Yeah, and by the way, also, one of those matchups you're going to want to see, the front seven here for the 49ers getting pressure on Jared Goff. The Detroit Lions have one of the better offensive lines in the league. There are some pluses here for the Detroit yep. Lions heading into this football game, and maybe that offensive line could be the biggest plus overall. But you have to like where you're playing here for Detroit. Back-to-back playoff wins here. Now you're heading on the road. It's not house money. You don't get to the NFC Championship game by getting lucky here. Maybe you need a break or two to go your way. But if you're telling me that the Detroit offense is going to struggle against the San Francisco 49ers, I need to see it to believe it. I'm not saying the Detroit offense will dominate, but they'll be in it to win it in this game. Great, great matchup. Can't wait to see it play out on Sunday. Again, Detroit only a dog three times this year. They are 2-1 and one against the spread, including one outright victory on the road in Kansas City in the season debut. And maybe another outright victory if they would have reported as eligible. Correct. AFC Championship Game Preview next. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I'm not going to lie. I'm a Nick fan. I feel bad for Obi Toppin. I mean, Obi Toppin was backing up Julius Randle, and then he got his opportunity. Indiana was playing great. Didn't play Dave. Burned him off the bench. And now they got Pascal Siakam, and now he's going into a free agent year. So Obi may be looking for a new home. But I, but I do like that fast break of the Burton with Obi and Siakam. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. They were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're, there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
AFC Championship game in Baltimore. It's the Ravens and the Chiefs. The Ravens in an AFC title game for the first time since the 2012 NFL season, a year they ended as a Super Bowl champion. But that was Joe Flacco, and now this is Lamar Jackson. It's been the same story for six years for Kansas City under Patrick Mahomes, six years as the starter in KC. The Chiefs have now reached the AFC Championship game all six seasons the one main difference though those previous five years they hosted the AFC title game in Arrowhead now Mahomes and KC on the road in the Charm City here are the early numbers for the AFC title game a three and a half point spread in favor of the flock the over under is 44 and a half the AFC championship game in Baltimore what's the early thought Donnie right side Decent weather conditions in the 40s, winds under 10 miles an hour. And again, we're still a week out from this football game, but no precipitation in the forecast. So we're going to have an even slate, which means Lamar Jackson is going to get disrespected just like he is right now from the FanDuel Sportsbook. 210 yards for his passing number, passing touchdowns over one and a half plus 140. And also his rushing number here. Let me see what that's coming in around 59 and a half. I'm all ravened up Mm. here. And there's a Donnie. Well, of course you're cheering for him. You had a ticket that you took out. Stop the madness here. There's some games and some teams that I just think have an edge and coming into this game most people if you're just a common fan what Mahomes getting three and a half and really I can't argue with it because that theory has worked time and time again what are you kidding me the Chiefs are getting points I'll just let the chips fall where they may and over field goal yes but I truly believe in this instance here Kansas City Bennett we talked about them over the year I wanted to trust them late in the season, and I saw the flaws in their offense. And quite frankly, they still had some flaws yesterday, which which we'll get to a little bit later in the week. But just putting a Mm -hmm. cap on that season was like, I don't know if I can trust them in the playoffs. Now, they won easily against the Miami Dolphins, and they go on the road and beat the Buffalo Bills, two quality football teams. But those two football teams were not rested and ready coming into that game. They weren't coming off a bye week. They won't have to travel for weeks. Let's also keep in mind, Ben, the Baltimore Ravens' last two games – at home, I believe, correct, right? It was the Miami Dolphins and also then the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. They're home for a month. They haven't even been on a plane or a bus oh, yeah. in their own facilities, in their own beds, rested and ready for this one. And also keep in mind, the Ravens' defense is elite. The Ravens' defense elite. is healthy. The Ravens' defense are probably going to get Marlon Humphrey back for this week and be completely intact with one of the best defensive play callers in the NFL. And then that leaves Lamar Jackson on offense. If you thought Josh Allen yesterday, was like, wow, man, he was really getting off out there and being able to run and do what he wants. Where do you see Lamar Jackson in this football game? I'm so excited for the Ravens prospects. I think they match up incredibly well with the Kansas City Chiefs. And there are no excuses. Put it this way, Ben. When the Ravens wake up this one, oh, no, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes. Like, no, they're like, okay, time to get to work and win a Super Bowl now. Yeah, absolutely so. When you look at these two teams, Donnie, of course, you start with Baltimore. 14 wins, the most in the regular season. That was 13. The flock even covered as a nine and a half point favorite on Saturday against Houston. Both of the Ravens covers as more than a touchdown favorite this year in their five games booked as so coming against Houston to bookend the Texans season. We have shared this multiple times by the numbers. This will be just the 14th game in the past six NFL seasons that Patrick Mahomes has started at quarterback for Kansas City, and they've been booked as the underdog. They are 8-5 and straight up after yesterday's outright victory in Buffalo as a two and a half point dog. They are the only team in that span as an underdog in the National Football League the previous six seasons to have a winning record outright as a dog the Ravens have been booked as a favorite in 15 of their 18 games they are now 10 and 5 against the spread overall this year and we shared they weren't great covering when favored by more than a touchdown that means they're used to this spot around that field goal number laying three and a half the over under is a fascinating number to me Donnie because when you look at 44 and a half for Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes you probably think some points but you're not wrong in your consideration to both of these defenses. The Chiefs allowed 24 points yesterday on the road in Buffalo. Did not allow a single point by the time we reached the fourth quarter. But it did snap an eight-game streak for KC under Steve Spagnuolo that he allowed 20 points or less. It is why KC was the second-best scoring defense in the NFL throughout the regular season. Who was number one? 
the Baltimore Ravens, the only team in the National Football League that allowed less than 17 points per game on average. Both of these defenses, Donnie, elite in every major stat category. KC top five in yards per game, points per game, passing yards per game. Baltimore top six in points per game, yards per game, and passing yards per game. Both struggle relative to those numbers against the run, but the Ravens still top half in the NFL. They held Houston only 38 rushing yards on Saturday. The Chiefs gave up more than 180 against the Buffalo Bills. The Chiefs 18th out of 32 NFL clubs throughout the regular season in terms of rushing defense, and now they're facing the flock who had four guys or three guys run for at least 40 yards on Saturday against the Texans, led by Lamar Jackson, who had 100 yards on the ground, three of five playoff games for Lamar. Now in his career, he has reached at least the century mark in terms of rushing yards. Yes, and I do believe he is going to have a wonderful game this weekend against the Chiefs. And also keep in mind, we're down to the final four. The Ravens are one of those final four teams. You take a look at who the Ravens have played in the final four. Detroit at home absolutely smashed that football team. The yep. San Francisco 49ers, the odds on favor to win the Super Bowl, absolutely smashed them in their own building. So this isn't one of those cases where you might bring up like, hey, they've Luck of the draw, they had a great season, but they didn't play anybody, and every quarterback was injured when they play them. Nonsense here. This team's not going to line up in front of that home crowd in Baltimore at m t Bank Stadium and say, oh, I hope we get lucky today again, and maybe Mahomes won't play so well. They don't need that to happen. They're solid in every single facet of the game, and also keep in mind, Bucker is a wonderful field goal kicker here, obviously, for the Kansas City Chiefs. You have the single best kicker in the history of the sport on your side this weekend. That helps out. Yep. If we're looking for a close game, you know who's making that field goal? Yeah, it's going to be Tucker, absolutely guaranteed. So if we're looking at this line, just give me the threes out there. If they're there, it's the Baltimore Ravens for me. And I would have, and it's, well, Donna, you love the Ravens here. I can't believe the Kansas City won. That wouldn't be a shock. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's Andy Reid. They live in the AFC Championship game in the Super Bowl. They love this type of pressure. But from a matchup for matchup perspective, what I might be thinking a little bit differently if this game was in Kansas City, maybe because it's hard to win on the road in these type of environments. But you got to be kidding me here. The Ravens have built this entire season for this moment, which includes mm. thrashing quality playoff team after quality playoff team which did include the houston texans coming in as one of the red hot offenses in the nfl that they held to zero offensive touchdowns i'm not saying they're going to do that yeah. against the kansas city chiefs but for the chiefs to earn this victory they're really going to have to earn it because that defense is looking for blood this weekend against the chiefs the baltimore ravens had the fifth best price to win the afc title before this year got started at nine to one even behind Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. That is still laughable to think back on. But the Ravens were the short favorites entering this postseason in the AFC at plus 125. They were plus 115 entering the divisional round before they even played a game. Now, if you were to look at their conference championship price, it's that money line as a three and a half point home favorite, minus 172. But Donnie, if you were to bet Kansas City, to win the AFC every year under Patrick Mahomes in the last six, he would have just found some money. And maybe that's the thought moving forward, even when it seemed like the Chiefs would not reach this pinnacle in the AFC once again. Here they are, plus 350, booked as the preseason favorites to win the conference championship in the AFC. Closer to a 5-1 to one number before the playoffs got underway behind both Baltimore and Buffalo. And yet here they are in a conference championship game for the sixth consecutive season. Yes, and also from a Ravens perspective here, I expected a very good season out of the Ravens and bet them win the, win the Super Bowl. And it wasn't one of those bets. You're like, oh, well, if they make a deep run in the playoffs, I can hedge out, which I'm telling you right now, if the Ravens make the Super Bowl at my 18-1 to price, I am going to hedge out and relax and enjoy that Super Bowl with some really good coin in my mm. pocket. Oh, Donnie, don't hedge. You might even have the favorite in the Super Bowl if Detroit wins. Stop the madness. It's about making a profit here. But again, this ticket wasn't one of those things. I hope I make some money off. There was a legitimate thought that they would win the Super Bowl, and now we're playing and yeah. quite frankly if they make the Super Bowl and it's the 49ers they can't beat the wait they already hammered the 49ers on Christmas in their own building so they're not going to come into that yeah. game in Las Vegas by saying Ben like who I don't know if we could compete with the with the 49ers we didn't stack up against them they absolutely did 
the expectations, obviously, to start the season for the Kansas City Chiefs are always Super Bowl or bust. So it isn't a surprise that they got here, but just getting there in different ways, not as dominant, but playing more physically on defense that they have in the past couple of years. That was a great win yesterday for Kansas City, no doubt about it, in an atmosphere that the Bills fans have been waiting for for their entire lives, and it didn't work out. But let's just see if those Kansas City Chiefs can do it one more time against a full-go team. Because quite frankly, if they end up winning again here against the Baltimore Ravens and going to another Super Bowl, this was supposed to be the year, Ben, midway through we said, you better get your licks on the Chiefs because when they add a number one wide receiver to that team, Mm -hmm. you're not going to catch them next year. And if they win the Super Bowl this year, I don't know what that says about Mahomes and Reed. What an unbelievable performance. But if they do win it, they're certainly going to earn it. Wins on the road at Buffalo at the Ravens, and then the 49ers in the Super Bowl. What a gauntlet they're running through right now. It would be their fourth Super Bowl appearance in the last six years with Patrick Mahomes as the starting quarterback for Kansas City. Dynasty maybe already, certainly coining that in a Super Bowl matchup against either the 49ers or the Lions on the other side. And to check in on those Super Bowl 58 odds, Baltimore has nearly a dollar and a half advantage over Kansas City at the moment. The flock plus 210, KC at plus 350. San Francisco remains the favorite at plus 145, over a half dollar in front of the Baltimore Ravens. The Lions have the fourth and longest price of the NFL's Final Four, a 7-1 to one number for Detroit. That is how we stack up entering this conference championship weekend. Back to the props quickly for the AFC title game between the Ravens and the Chiefs. We will focus on the ground with Lamar Jackson, but the guy on the other side, not even Patrick Mahomes, Isaiah Pacheco. Five games in his NFL career for the Chiefs in the postseason. He has had at least 76 scrimmage yards. He has scored a touchdown in each of the two playoff games this year for Kansas City. The guy on the other side, Justice Hill, Lamar Jackson, Gus Edwards in the backfield. That's the matchup for me. Rutgers football on the biggest stage, Donnie. Yeah, how about that? It's pretty impressive, right? And also, if you take a look from a rushing perspective here, don't leave out Patrick Mahomes in his 27 and a half. Now, he didn't get that number yesterday, but did get close to it. He's a big game runner as well. And if you want to say that Baltimore is solid defense on the ground, they are. They're not a lockdown defense, but who's going to say Isaiah Pacheco saying under 61 and a half if we think this is going to be a close football game? If you tell me right now Pacheco gets 16 carries, he's getting 61 and a half. I don't care what that rushing defense did last week against Singletary. Singletary and Isaiah Pacheco, complete opposites on how they run the football. Yeah, absolutely so. I love the 61 and a half number for Pacheco. I think you could make some sense with Lamar Jackson, 59 and a hook. Yes, you are paying for it a little bit because it was 51 and a half against Houston in the AFC Divisional round, but it reflects what Lamar Jackson has done throughout his playoff career and what he has done so far this postseason. We'll talk about injury availability for Baltimore as well if Mark Andrews is going to play in the Mm. AFC Championship game against KC. Our pro football talk will be here in hour number three. Before we get to our third hour, we hear from you up next. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I'm not going to lie. I'm a Nick fan. 
I feel bad for Obi Toppin. I mean, Obi Toppin was backing up Julius Randle, and then he got his opportunity in Indiana, was playing great, didn't play Dave, burned him off the bench, and now they got Pascal Siakam, and now he's going into a free agent year. So, Obi may be looking for a new home, but I, but I do like that fast break if it's Halliburton with Obi and Siakam. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. They were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're, there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Live right here to end out our number two of the early line on this Monday on Sports Grid. It's Ben, it's Donnie, but more importantly, it's the Sports Grid app, the ultimate sports betting companion app available for download at both the Apple and the Play Store. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen, all of our information and insight available in the palm of your hand. We love hearing from the people, and we do that now. The NFL's Final Four, the AFC Championship game, first up on Sunday. It's the Chiefs and the Ravens in Baltimore in the NFC title game. The nightcap on Conference Championship Sunday. The Niners host the Detroit Lions. So of the Final Four in the National Football League, who is most likely to win Super Bowl 58? That's what we ask you in Fade the Public. Now, let me say, at SportsGrid TV on Twitter, some interesting results in this fade the public poll. The Baltimore Ravens, the number one seed in the AFC, a three-and-a-half point favorite against the Chiefs on Sunday at home, have most of this vote to win Super Bowl 58 in Viva Las Vegas, nearly 46%. Who is the second most? Not the San Francisco 49ers, the favorites. Not the Kansas City Chiefs, who have won two Super Bowls in the last four years. The Detroit Lions at nearly 23% of the vote. Donnie, make sense of it. What is the public saying? All right, here's what the public is basically saying. The East Coast is up yeah. and ready to rock this morning, which is why the Ravens mm. have a 46% vote here. And you take a look and say the actual favorites of the Super Bowl to win it right now are the 49ers pulling up last place, Ben, at 14%. Maybe this changes around, let's just say, noon Eastern time or 3 p.m. in the East when the West Coast does wake up. But I love the vibes right now. We're all I, Look, who's the Eagles fan? I'm not a, I'm a Ravens fan. Whoever said this I was an Ravens. Eagles fan? Let's That's go, Ravens. Let's go. That's the yeah. flock that Donnie Wright side yeah. cares about. Shout out to our guys, John L. He agrees. How are the 49ers the favorites? Baltimore went to Santa Clara on Christmas night and shellacked them. Mm. And our guy, Lorne Nadeau, he agrees with John, the public active on this Monday morning. Hour three starts in 55 seconds. 